Today we will learn about the diseases of coffee. Coffee is an important beverage crop and is a major source of revenue which form foreign exchange for most of the coffee growing countries including India. It is commercially cultivated in hilly tracts of western and eastern ghats of India. The coffee industry of India is the sixth largest producer of coffee in the world. By 1840, under British rule, India began to grow coffee for export. And in the mid 19th century, coffee rust reached India and began infecting Arabica coffee trees. By 1869, the rust became an epidemic. So after the introduction part, let's see some of the important fungal diseases of coffee in India. According to the importance, the first one is the leaf rust. Leaf rust is caused by Hemilia vastratix, black rot and it is caused by Corticium salmonicolor. Then third important disease of coffee is the anthracnose. It is caused by Glomerula cingulata. And after that, next important disease is the sooty mold and it is caused by Capnodium brasiliensis. Now we will go one by one details of the important diseases of coffee. First one is the leaf rust and the causal organism of the leaf rust is the Hemilia vastratix. Now let's see the importance of the disease. The disease is considered as the most important classical disease of coffee. The fungus infects only the foliage of the genus Coffea. It is host specific and with a physiological race of 45 physiological race are reported so far out of which 35 are present in India. Rust life cycle, euridial, telial and basidial stages are known. Coming to the basidial spores, these basidial spores are non-functional and pycnia acea stages are absent. Symptoms is the basic things by which one can understand regarding the appearance of the disease. The most important symptoms of the coffee rust are a pale yellow translucent while spots appear on 12 weeks old young leaves on the lower surface and this later on turn into a orange yellow powdery masses of iridospore. These iridospores are reniform with spines on the dorsal side. Pear shape non-resting hyaline telospores are normally produced during January to April in a season. Spots expands into a large of around 10 to 15 millimeter in diameter then round spots and so a powdery coating of spores on the under surface of the leaf. Finally, the spots turn bright orange to red with a yellow rusted band. Next, the leaves are shed when they are 16 weeks old. Then in severe attacks, leaves are completely defoliated. So these are the symptoms of the disease. Next we will go for the favorable condition of the disease. The favorable condition of the disease is the rainy weather and periods with mist or dew and moderate temperature favors the disease. After the favorable condition, next is the mode of spread and survival. It is observed that one lesion produces one and a half plaques of iridospore which are spread by the rain splash and wind. So now we have gone through the symptoms, favorable conditions and spread of the disease. Next we will learn about the management practices of the disease. Let's see how we can manage the disease. First of all, 
the first is the, the blossom spray of 0.5% body mixture in February and March as a pre-monsoon spray with 0.03% plantar wax during the May and June. Next, we can go for the spraying of the systemic fungicide. Some of the systemic fungicide like triadimaphon and the dose of the triadimaphon is the 0.02%. Or even we can go for the spring of the hexaconazole 0.01 percent or propiconazole at the rate of the 0.02 percent or epoxyconazole at the rate of 0.0026 percent. Then after that we can go for the mid monsoon spray that is the July August and post monsoon spray that is the September to October with the mixture of body mixture or plantar wax along with this spreader and sticker like linseed oil or tea pole or casein which increase the fungicide efficacy. So these are the all about the rust of the coffee. Next is the black rot, second most important disease. The black rot is caused by choleroga noxia. This disease is considered to be the second most important disease and affects both Arabica and Robusta coffee during monsoon period. Now we will go for the symptoms of the disease. The pathogen infects leaves developing berries and growing young shoots. The most striking symptoms are blackening and rotting of the infected leaves developing berries and young twigs. Next is the favorable condition for the disease. The favorable condition for the disease is the continuous monsoon without a long dry spell. Then saturated atmosphere with 95 to 100 percent relative humidity. Then thick overhead set sheltered from the sunlight and heavy wind in valleys Frequent or continuous mist during the monsoon period are the favorable condition for the disease. Next, we will go for the management practices of the disease. First of all, cultural treatment. Cultural treatment like thinning of the overhead set of the epidemic black rot affected blocks before the onset of monsoon. Then we can go for the chemical treatment. Chemicals like adequate coverage of body mixture 1% or carbon resin at the rate of 0.03%. It should be mixed with 120 gram of carbon resin in 200 liters of water and spraying is to be done just before the onset of monsoon. And also during breaks in monsoon, especially in the months of August. Then other than this, we can go for the spraying the epidemic blocks with carbon resin at 0.03 percent. This dose is the same as I have mentioned earlier that is the 120 gram in 200 liters of water just before the onset of monsoon and also during break in monsoon that is the during August. Next important disease is the anthracnose. The anthracnose is caused by polytrotacum gliosporites. The fungus affects leaves, twigs, as well as berries of coffee. The fungus causes three different diseases on coffee. So the three different type of the diseases are twig dieback or summer dieback. Next one is the stock rot of berries and leaves. And the third one is the brown blight of leaves. So let's see the first one, twig dieback or summer dieback. Debility of twigs or branches due to defoliation, crop strain, inadequate overhead set, and the symptoms are yellowing or blightening of leaf on the green wood. The next is the stock rot of berries and leaves. Stock rot of berries, the symptoms are necrosis of the nodes and internodes from the junction of the brown and the green wood towards the apex, followed by berry drop and defoliation. 
The third one of the anthracnose symptoms is the brown blight of leaf. Generally seen on the leaf during the hot weather, round necrotic spots appear on the leaves. Two or more such spots coalesce and the entire leaf portions of any look blighted. Necrotic spots are brown in color, hence the name has been given brown blight. Acerbuli of the fungus are also seen as a black dots on the upper or lower surface of the leaf. So these are the symptoms of the anthracnose. Next, we'll learn about the favorable condition of the disease. The favorable condition of the disease is the dry period following the monsoon rain. Next is the mode of spread. The disease is spread by the wind-borne conidia. Now we have learned about the anthracnose diseases, symptoms, mode of spread and environmental conditions. Next we will go for the management practices of the disease. First of all, provide drainage and apply balanced fertilizer. Maintain good overhead set to avoid sun scalding of leaves. Other than this, we can go for the spraying of the chemicals like pre-monsoon spraying of 0.5% body mixture or 0.03% babistin or ferrobum. 120 gram of this ferrobum should be mixed with the 200 liter of water to protect the leaves from the rust fungus appears to give adequate protections against brown blight also. So these are the three important diseases of coffee. Next important disease that is the sooty mold. The sooty mold it is caused by the Capnodium brasiliensis. Now let's see how it looks like that is the symptoms. Whenever there is a heavy attack of aphids and scales sooty mold occurs. The fungus feeds on the secretion of insects but it is not a parasite. It spread on the leaf surface forming a black vein which cuts off light from the green leaves. Sooty growth affects photosynthetic activity of the plant. So this is the symptoms of the sooty mold. Let's see about the management of the sooty mold. Management of the sooty mold can be managed by the aphids and scales with the insecticides then boil maida or jack seed flour with 5 liter of water then after that cool it and dilute to 20 liter and spray on the leaf surface. Then after this the mold will be automatically peeled off from the leaf surface. So like this we can manage this disease. Let's see that what are the major diseases of the coffee nursery. Generally there are three major diseases on seedling of the coffee nursery. They are first one is the color rot or damping off and it is caused by Rhizoctonia solani. Next leaf spot and stem necrosis. This disease is caused by Myrothesium roridum. Then third most important disease of the nursery is the brown eye spot. The disease is caused by the Sarcospora coffeecola. First one is the color rot or damping off. Regarding this, the fungus is a soil inhabitant, affects seedlings of coffee in two stages in the nursery. That is the first one is the pre-emergence damping off and second one is the post-emergence damping off. Let's see about the pre-emergence damping off. In the pre-emergence damping off, embryo and endosperm are invaded by the fungi before germination and the radical during germination. Seeds rot and disintegrate. These are the symptoms of the pre-emergence damping off. Now we'll see the post-emergence damping off symptoms. Here the seedling shows brownish discoloration on the stem near the ground level that is the collar region below the cotyledon leading to the rotting of the tissues. Growing apex wilt as a result seedling collapse and die. Let's see how we can manage. First one is the solarization of nursery soil for 
two to three months. Preparation of raised seed beds, good drainage to ward off excess soil moisture. This is removing of the overcrowded seedlings for maintaining the proper spacing. Or filtered overhead seed using choir mats or HDPE mats. Then chemical treatments like Bevistin 50 WP at 1 gram per kg or Betavax 75 WP at 0.66 gram per kg of seeds. Or even this can be drenched in the nursery beds with 0.4% captain or spray with any of the mentioned fungicides to protect the seedlings in the primary seed bed. This is the about the damping off of seedlings. Next important disease in the nursery is the leaf spot and stem necrosis. This disease is caused by Myrothesium roridum. Regarding this disease, this disease occurs on seedlings both in the primary and secondary nursery beds. Regarding the symptoms, water soaked brown to gray discolorations appear at any places of the leaves and tender portion of the stem of the seedlings. Fructifications of the fungus on the infected areas and also on the stem with as a small white dots. This is the about the disease. Management of the disease can be done by this following ways. First one is the remove and destroy of the leaves and affected seedlings to control the spread of the disease. Spray of the chemicals like foliar spray with tilt 25 EC. It is also available as a propiconazole and the dose is the 0.02%. And this should be spray once in 30 days interval to the affected seedlings. Other than this, we can also go for the foliar spray with folicure 25 EC and it is also available as a tebukunazole and the dose is the 0.02%. This is also to be sprayed same as the previous one that is the 30 days interval to the affected seedlings. Then third most important disease of the nursery is the brown eye spot. The disease is caused by the Sarcospora coficola. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. The symptoms are fungus affects only the leaves of seedlings, circular necrotic spots with dark brown margin and light brown or pale center is visible symptoms on affected leaves. In severe infection, the necrotic spots increase in size. Now let's see how the disease can be managed. The disease can be managed by providing a bundle overhead set in the nursery to avoid the exposure of seedlings to sunlight, providing adequate mulch to conserve soil moisture. On observing incidents, protect the plants in the nursery by spraying fungicides like Captan or Dithan M45 or Ferbum etc. at the rate of 0.4%. Or we can go for spraying Foltaf ATWP, it is called also called as a Captafol. This should be sprayed once in 30 days interval. So these are the all fungal important diseases of coffee. Now let's see the most important nematode disease of coffee. The most important nematode disease of coffee is the root knot nematode and it is caused by the different species of Meloidogain. Now let's see the importance of the disease. There are over 80 described species of root knot nematode and although some are host specific, others are decidedly not and may attack a broad range of plants. Now we'll go for the management of the nematode disease of coffee. First one is the cultural control. The best way to manage root node nematode is to plant clean rootstocks 
into clean crown. Next is the heat treatment of soil. So heat treatment of soil can go through like this. The soil in which the coffee seedlings are grown in the nurseries may be heat treated prior to use so as to kill any nematodes present. Chemical control. Chemical control of root node nematodes in the tree crop is very costly as because of the enormous volume of soil that must be treated in order to reduce the total nematode population to a reasonable level. Then we can go for the host plant resistance for the management of nematode. Host plant resistance to nematode has been widely studied in certain crops such as banana or vegetable. Although in coffee, most information comes from research in Brazil where the rootstock coffee Canaphora C225S has shown good resistance to Meloidogyne, Exigua and resistance or tolerance to several populations. So, so far we have learned about the important diseases of coffee, its symptoms, its spread and management practices. Now to the conclusions, it is can be said that coffee is one of the important beverage crop and cultivated in hilly tracts of western and eastern ghats of India including northeastern hilly region. Its production is hampered by several biotic and abiotic factors. Among the biotic factors other than the insect, diseases caused by fungi, bacteria as well as nematodes are the important ones. Important fungal diseases that cause losses in coffee productions are leaf rust, black rot, anthracnose, sooty mold and also root knot nematode. Management of these diseases depends on proper diagnosis of the disease, understanding the life cycle of the pathogens, source of infection, times of disease appearance, survival and other epidemiological factors.